and Britain dealing with the biggest strike in more than a decade, with schools shut and rail networks disrupted. More than a half a million workers plan to stage a walkout over pay and working conditions. Well, let's stay on that story. The latest industrial action in Britain, up to half a million workers across different sectors, are on strike to demand better pay. We want Civil servants are venting their frustrations as high inflation eats into their pay. More than 100 public agencies in turmoil, including the health, transport and education departments. Civil service turnover is at its highest level in a decade. A union say negotiations with the government are going backwards. A train services around the country have completely stopped. Thousands of drivers are staging two days of walkouts. Classes are cancelled for many students with up to 200,000 teachers joining demonstrations for higher wages. Educators say their salary has tanked by up to 13 percent and the long working hours are not making things any easier. Ollie Barrett is joining us live from London. Ollie, half a million people. What is the situation on the streets now? And remind us again how the strikes reached this stage. <laughs> Yeah, well, there are very mixed situations on the streets of the UK at the moment. I'm here uh, at a school in central London, and actually at places like this, things are pretty quiet. That's entirely the point. This school is a good example of how some educational establishments are having to deal with today because they haven't been quite sure exactly how many of their members of staff would join the strike and therefore what capabilities they would have to continue educating children. So at this primary school. A couple of year groups have been allowed to come in, but other than that, four or five year groups above them have been told, uh, their parents have been told to keep those children at home for the day, and some schools are providing online learning and that kind of thing to make sure that children miss out on as little as possible. Elsewhere in the country, there are lots of picket lines, there are protests as well, so differing uh, pictures across the country. In terms of how we got to this point, part of it is to do with the inflationary picture that this country is seeing like so many others and many unions in different industries across the economy are saying that their real wages over the course of the last year, two years, three years have actually been decreasing and many of the unions and many of the staff that work in schools and other public services up and down the country are saying they need significant pay rises just to really try and keep their heads above water uh, at the moment. Now, the unions also say it's been a picture of underfunding coming from central government. The government, for its part, says it wants to continue negotiations with unions and with employers, and it wants to come to resolutions that don't become unaffordable for the wider economy. In some of those different um, disputes and arguments in different parts of the economy, we've seen limited progress towards perhaps some kind of pay deals that might end some of these episodes of industrial action. In other sectors, we're really seeing a stalemate. But uh, looking ahead, we really are in a situation now where we may well see more days like this one when huge swathes of the economy simply pause for the day. Mm. And on that point of negotiations, uh, the unions seem to think they're going backwards. Uh, if that's the case, are workers then still open to continue talking? And do you feel there's even hope for a compromise? Well, the unions insist that they're open to talking and the government insists that it is open to talking as well. The difficulty has been whether those negotiations really go anywhere. And one of the criticisms that the unions, for example, in the health sector, have levelled at the government, they say that the government's, yes, been turning up to talks, but when the health minister, for example, arrives at negotiations, he doesn't want to talk about pay. And that is one of the central issues at play here. So it's not just about negotiations, it's about whether they can actually make any meaningful progress. I think there is growing hope in the government at the moment that we might be edging towards uh, some agreements in some sectors. The other hope in government is that actually inflation might start to ease off and ease off pretty quickly in the months ahead and that that might make some of these pay negotiations uh, rather simpler. But the unions certainly are digging in for what they see as fair pay rises and therefore we really do see the prospect of further industrial action mm. coming down the line here in the 
UK economy uh, after a period of months in which we've seen a lot already. Mm. Ali, thank you so much. Ali Barrett is in London reporting on the industrial strike action all across Britain.